So two weeks ago, we started a series that um, I've entitled Sheepish, uh, because there is a word that is used over and over and over in Scripture that talks about us, that we are sheep. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like that very much. You know, you look around all the mascots that we have from schools to colleges, and I have never seen one called the mighty fighting sheep. Want to be the eagle or the bear or the lion? Man, that's what we are. Because when you read in Scripture, you begin to see that sheep need one to care for them, like us. And I read this week, and uh, I think it was Max Licato's book on Psalm 23, uh, he talked about how different animals rest in different ways. For instance, cats sleep up to 20 hours a day. Isn't that amazing? They take little cat naps, Right? Horses sleep standing up. Sheep don't rest so well. Uh, there's another book uh, by Philip Keller uh, called A Shepherd's Look at the 23rd Psalm. And he says that in order for sheep to even lie down to rest, four things have to be in place. Number one, they have to be free from the fear of attack. They have to be free from tension within the flock. They have to be free from aggravation such as gnats or flies. And they have to be full. Otherwise, they don't rest. And as I was looking at that list, it kind of sounds like us, doesn't it? We have to be free from aggravation. We have to be full, not only with good food, but full in our spirit. We have to realize that there's no tension between us and another person in the body of Christ. You know, someone once told me when I was a young pastor, he said to me, he said, Charles, I want you to always remember something. And I said, what is that? As a pastor, you should always remember that sheep bite. And some of us have been bitten. And it hurts. And it's hard to rest when that happens in our life. And some of us need to let go of some of that anger and bitterness this morning, if you have it, so that you can know the full rest of Christ that he longs to pour into your life. So this morning, as we think about what we have in Christ, I want us to think about this question in the midst of your life, in your family, where you work, where you go to school, your all of your activities, do you have the peace of Jesus Christ. Two weeks ago, we we talked about as we began this psalm, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What? Another shepherd. So many of us are being led by the other shepherds of this world. And we wonder why we're led astray in the midst of our life. But as we continue this week, we're going to look at how that good shepherd longs to provide peace and rest for us because many of our lives feel like this. Just crowded and can't move and don't know where you're going, so the only other thing you can do is move with the herd instead of being outside where Christ may lead you. Now, one of the other things that's very interesting in uh, the Holy Land, oh, I forgot, I love this picture. It's called Peace. Do you see the guy right there in the midst of the lighthouse with all of the storms and of life? He has peace because he knows the foundation and the structure and the power that he has in the lighthouse. 
Well, this morning, we need to remember the peace we can have as Jesus, as our good shepherd. But this is the wilderness in the Holy Land. This is where a shepherd would try to find green pastures. <gasps> this is actually a shot that I took from Masada um, in Israel. It's a beautiful place to look out over the valleys and the and every once in a while you'll find green pasture. But the shepherd has to know to lead the sheep of where that green pasture is as Christ leads us as well to find the green pasture and the still waters that our life needs. So with that in mind, I want you to open to Psalm 23 again, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Let's stand in honor of the Word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. As we are thinking about what we have in Christ, as we are thinking about him as our good shepherd that provides, we already looked at, I shall want no other shepherd, but I want us to continue to think about that because literally we are guided by many shepherds in our life, but there's only one called the good shepherd, it's Jesus. But as we think about the idea of he maketh who here has a problem with that? I don't know about you. I wanted to say Jesus invites us to lie down in green pastures. I want to look at Jesus calls us to come to him and lie down in green pastures. But that's not what Psalm 23 says. It says he maketh us to lie down in green pastures. You want to know why? Because he wants to give us rest. Again, a little bit about sheep, and this is some stuff I read from uh, Philip Keller and Max Licato and some others, but one of the things about sheep is this. They have po very poor eyesight. They can't see very far. And so because of that, sheep have a tendency to wander away from the flock and from the shepherd. Because they say, oh, this little bit of clover looks good. I'll come over here. And then when they go two or three steps, and oh, this clover looks good, and then two or three more, and this clover gets, looks good. And before they know it, they're 100 yards, 200 yards, a mile away from the shepherd, one step at a time, and we're just like sheep. You think about David. I don't think David woke up one morning and said, hey, I'm going to commit adultery, and I'm going to commit murder. But one little step at a time, he didn't hear, didn't listen, didn't obey God in his life. And I think for us, if we were to be truthful, that can be us. One little step at a time. One little, oh, I'm not going to get up this morning and do my quiet time because I'm too tired. Got too much on my plate. Well, one day becomes two. Two becomes a week. A week becomes a month. And we wonder why we don't feel the power of God in our life. In Genesis 22, there's a wonderful story of, of Abraham and Isaac. And Abraham, we're, I'm not going to preach on this passage, that's for another time, but Abraham was told by God to sacrifice Isaac. He goes, lays him on the altar. Then that wonderful passage, it says, and the Lord provided the lamb. You know that, where that place was? Mount Moriah. 
Do you know where Jesus was crucified? Mount Moriah. Many scholars believe it was for sure on the same mount. It may have been even the same place that the Lord provides for us. And one of the many names of God in the Scripture is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides. I don't know what you need for Him to provide for you this morning, but here, God provides. Let Him. And we're going to see the many ways that He does that in our lives. First of all, the Lord uh, is, makes us lie down in green pasture. He gives us the provision of rest. There's two ways primarily that peace is used in the scriptures. First of all, in Romans 5, 1, we are told that we have peace with God. We're no longer at war with God. Do you know that? Because of Jesus, we're no longer at war. We know the peace with God. But the second is that we now have the peace of God through Jesus Christ, that he pours that into us. But as we think about that he makes us lie down in green pastures, I don't know about you, but some of us here this morning need to know that he longs to provide us rest. I read a blog um, by James Emery White, and this week he said this, when people tell me that God seems distant in their lives, my first question to them is often, what are you doing to stay close? A spiritual disorder is at hand, and we need to seek out the cause of the trouble. Are you praying? Are you spending time uh, reading and reflecting upon the Word of God? Are you involved in worship weekly and daily? Are you connecting with God's people who will challenge your life? Are you engaged in some kind of ministry outside of the church? Are you carving out time to meditate upon where you are and your relationship with Christ? Then he goes on, yes, there are times when we walk through what St. John of the Cross uh, says, the darkness uh, of the soul, the dark night of the soul, a time when God seems distant or has left us. But those times do not last, and they are there to deepen our trust and our dependency upon God. Most of the time when God seems to have left, it is from us drifting away from him, not him leaving us. Romans 1 says he left them to do the desires of their own heart. And that's what happens when we began, like sheep, to drift away from the shepherd, that we no longer even hear his voice when he speaks to us. There's a wonderful passage in the Gospel of John. It's uh, John 8, 31 and 32. It's one that we know well. It says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We like that part, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It's been quoted in a lot of different places, taken out of context. What Jesus said is, you abide in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. A couple of weeks ago, Janice shared with us the gift of abiding, which is more than just his word, but the gift of abiding in Christ. Connecting, dwelling, living, tabernacling with Christ. All of those is that word abide. But I love what the New Jerusalem Bible says, how they translate this passage. It says, Jesus says to us, if you make my word your home, are truly my disciples, you will know the truth 
and the truth will set you free. I don't know about you, but I think pretty often we make the Bible a hospital. It's a place we go when we're having a struggle in our life. Oh, Lord, I need you to get me out of this mess. So now I'm going to be connected to you and read the Bible, but really we're using the Word of God if nothing more than a hospital because once we're healed, once we're out of the problem, once we get through this fix, we don't open the Bible again. It's become nothing more than a hospital. I think sometimes we make the Word of God a vacation spot. It's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. And so we go there once a month or, well, you know, I kind of blow off the dust and twice a month. If you make my word your home, you live in it, you dwell in it, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So my question for you, that green pastor, for many of us this morning, we need to realize is the Word of God. Are we grazing? Are we eating? Are we meditating? Again, that word meditation is a wonderful word. You know what the word means? It means to regurgitate. It's what cows do. Chew a little bit. <gasps> Comes back up. Chew a little bit more. Swallow. And if we do that with the Word, we start in the morning in the Word of God, allowing it to penetrate into our hearts, and then throughout the day, we begin to regurgitate. We think about it. It's on the forefront of our hearts and mind. And we begin to see how it is lived out throughout the day. That's what it means in Psalm 1, is to meditate upon the Word of God. It truly is the green pasture. For us, are we allowing the Lord to strengthen, guide, enable our lives by being in the Word? He longs to provide the provision of rest, but He also longs to provide for us the provision of refreshment. He lead us beside still waters. Are you allowing the Lord to refresh your life? There's three things, so I want to quickly go through these that will enable us to make this happen in our lives. Number one, surrender yourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Are you doing that daily? And I would say not only daily, are you doing that hourly, moment by moment? Because it's easy to say, Lord, I surrender to you in the morning when we go uh, get up in the morning and have our quiet time, but then when you get on the freeway, that's gone. I don't know about you. That's why I don't have a fish on my car. No, we turn into a whole different person when we get on the freeway. Are we surrendering then? Are we surrendering when uh, we have a conflict at work? Are we surrendering when we have a conflict at home? Are we surrendering to the Lordship of Christ? Are we demanding our own way? Lord, I long for your refreshment. Help me to surrender to your lordship in the midst of my life. And then I think, secondly, he also wants each of us to identify your green pastures and your still waters. What is that for you? I believe for all of us, it's easily the word of God. But there's other places. Do you have that place of refreshment you can go to? For some, it's fishing. For some, it's hunting. For some, it's the lake. For some, it's sitting in your backyard. What, what is that place? And make sure you have time to go to that place to feel refreshment of the Lord because he longs to speak in you. Our lives are busy. Our lives are complicated. Our lives are sometimes chaotic. And we need the refreshment of Christ. Find that place. And then thirdly, let God lead you there every single day. Come to me, all ye are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let Christ give you rest 
in the midst of your life. Two weeks ago, we talked about challenges. The first one was to start memorizing, if you have not already, Psalm 23. You know, we are told in Scripture when we cry out to the Lord that the Holy Spirit will come and answer us. You know, the way that He answers us so often is to bring from the depths of our heart the Scripture that we've memorized. He will bring that to mind at the time that we need it. But if we don't have an arsenal of the Word hidden in our heart, there's not much to bring out. Psalm 23 is a great place to memorize. Many of you have got it memorized. Keep working at it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Then we talked about two weeks ago, is Jesus really all that you want? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Another shepherd? Is he your all in all? And then we talked about places that you could release to him that you struggle with. So this week, again, the challenge is to continue to memorize Psalm 23. Number two, instead of the list of areas that you need him to move, challenges to release, struggles, and heartaches, I want you to think about joys and celebrations you can give to him. What are those in your life? Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Anybody know that hymn? I love that hymn. It's not in our hymnal. I'm not bitter, but it's not in our hymnal. It was written by a Methodist pastor, and it's in the Baptist hymnal. I don't get it. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Instead of counting sheep at night, I wonder if sheep count humans. Anyway. Count your blessings. See where God has moved mightily in your life. Because what we begin to see is I will both lay down in peace and in sleep. For thou, O Lord, makest me dwell in safety. That's my prayer. That we have a God that gives us peace. And we have a God that cares for us desperately. How do we know that he cares for us desperately? We know because of Holy Communion. We know because we celebrate what we have in Christ. We remind ourselves who he is and whose we are through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ.